What is up, everybody? There's a deer running across the road. <laughs> is that a whitetail deer? Yeah. I didn't know that they had. I thought whitetail was like a southern thing. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. that was a side thought. Now, basically, we're just gonna be taking a look into the mind of Erica Stinchcomb. Kind of discuss her past, what's yeah. led her to now, her plans for the future, because there's an infinite <laughs> amount of possibilities. I will try to keep it brief. I'm not good at, at it. Uh, I started playing when I was 16. My dad taught me. Um, I didn't know there were tournaments until um, I graduated college in 2014. My first tournament was at Blue Mountain. Um, my friend who signed me up kind of kind of forced me to do it. I didn't want to. I was like, why would you pay money to play disc golf? Like, that's dumb. But uh, I'm so glad I did because I immediately started to sign up for uh, advanced women's tournaments. Um, I like dabbled in FPO. I traveled with my friend Tina Oakley um, all over, just like kind of like a little mini AM tour. Um, and then went pro in 2017. I had this super old 81 van. I lived in it for like a year almost to save up to do like an unfunded unsponsored tour other than whale sacks no manufacturer sponsor and it was like rough to start but like i did fine i played for six months i actually qualified for the pro tour championships that year in 2017 and it really just like let me know i can do this like this is a real life and career path that i can do and i wouldn't say that i <laughs> have like um just like eye-popping talent where it's like we need to sign her she's gonna be big right but I will work harder than anybody and I've been unwavering and I've done exactly what I've set out to do I make a living playing disc golf and um, I just think you know if if this is what you want to do or whatever it is you want to do just be determined be dogged prove that you have something to give and results will follow so um, you know I think um, I've made like a pretty cool life for myself with disc golf and commentary and then moving forward um, now I have even more opportunities to, to collaborate with all sorts of other companies thanks to Infinite um, I have so many ideas it's almost hard like what do I do first well you are very motivating thanks you make me want to get out and do some field work how about that there we go <laughs> that's awesome if I wrote a book, would you buy it? Of course I would motivated? buy it. You should write a book. <laughs> the Disc Golf Life Motivation Old Series. Maybe title it something different <laughs> than that. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing right here. Yeah, we're gonna get up, hopefully, and not get stuck. We just got to Blue Mountain. Talked about it a little bit in the car ride yeah. up here. I know this course means a lot to you. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to get like a brief history on why this course means so much to you. It's my home course. I grew up in San Diego, but like, this is kind of home as an adult. It's where I've chosen to live. My first tournament here was kind of a fluke and it's what got me started on this entire journey. The first time I like cashed for real, I got second here. And like, I wanna win this tournament so bad. It's actually gonna be a silver series this year in June. So like all the, all the pros are coming to town and I get to play my course. It's just like, nothing feels more like home to me. All right, we're good. So I guess I just, wanted to get some thoughts on your off season here, what it looks like and like how you're prepping for the tour coming. Um, I think I might've said this before, but I, I didn't pick this place to live because it's really great to train yeah. for disc golf in the off season. It's one of the best places when it's warm, mm -hmm. but when it's cold, like Montanans are intense and there, there is no training indoors. There's nowhere to yeah. throw indoors. We haven't managed to get a putting league going uh -huh. here in Missoula yet. So you are outside, yes. committed, doing a lot of like mm -hmm. breaking down the fundamentals of training. Yep. Um, and also just like generally trying to get exercise, you know, yep. like cardio, gym, like making sure your fitness level is high to make sure you don't get injured next year. Um, so I usually pick a couple things to work on, you know, two or three things maybe throughout the entire mm -hmm. three months uh, and just try to stay healthy and make some money. I also have a job. So. Well, how do you see disc golf in the future? Cause I know that you have to get a job in here. And so how do you see the future of disc golf kind of transitioning to where players don't have to go get a job in the off season? Yeah, totally. And not everyone does, but there's a lot of mid-level pros that just mm -hmm. are hustling hard, 
yep. have to sleep in the parking lots at tournaments. Like it's not by choice. It's because they have to yep. have to have the, the off season jobs. Whereas like, you know, the top dogs don't have to think about all that. Mm -hmm. um, what I would love to see is like everyone with a tour card is making, you know, that mid-level, let's say like dentist money, like 50 grand or something, right? Yeah. Um, instead of like scraping together yep. 10 or $20,000, that's literally just tour expenses. Yep. Like tour costs about 15, just like gas and camping, mm -hmm. which is nuts. I would love if we honestly played a little bit less, like we had off weekends in between. Yep. Um, and maybe like it is possible to fly and not everyone has to have mm -hmm. vans. And like in your off weekends, maybe you can go home. Yep. I mean, the summer is the best here and I miss it every year. I was home one week of 10 days. I was home yeah. for 10 days last year besides the off season. And like, that's really not enough. Cause yep. like, I love winter activities, but not enough to, only be in Missoula for winter activities. Like I want to be here more, you know? Yep. And not that disc golf is like the most back backbreaking of labor, but yep. like it'd be nice to be home and to make a comfortable wage, yep. you know, without sleeping in a parking lot. Yep. Well, the disc golf pro tour is definitely making some changes. So really? it's exciting to see the direction that they're going in. And I do want to get some thoughts on going into infinite and what that looks like oh, in the future along yeah. with the pro tour so let's talk about that wow <laughs> just to have um chances to work with new companies is, is exciting and um, what infinite is great about and some other companies i'll be working with is the sense of collaboration um and like let's grow together and there's no reason we can't be successful like partnering and working on something together and not like cutthroat business practices right so like i can go to a company and get some discs and infinite can stamp a run for me and it, it benefits both parties so like not just from a a selling standpoint because like i mean that's important but i mean not only can i throw anything but if i like it or like i have a friend at a different company i could be like do you want to like make a disc together that's like a me and a chandler fry disc or you know like me and madison walker like we could do anything we could do anything and I've never felt like that before regarding disc golf you know I've kind of felt in the same lane for a while now so I think the shakeup of leaving Westside though unexpected I think um in the long run it really is positive I like I really don't have hard feelings or anything I mean I wish I found out earlier but uh I think that the chances that I'm going to have now um, are literally infinite. I mean, I know that's <laughs> lame and a plug, but it's true. Um, I, I can't wait to see what next year looks like. I just, I think I'm going to have a lot more joy in throwing the disc. And for some reason, it just feels like the pressure's off and it just feels fun again, you know, and it's easy to lose that feeling in professional disc golf if you're not careful. We're gonna head to hole 10, it's most iconic hole. Absolutely, undoubtedly. Uh, you'll probably recognize it if you've never played it. Um, it's the best. It'll be my first time playing it, but we're gonna head over there and play the hole and then we'll finish off this video. Yeah, we're gonna ace it. Maybe not, but that's okay. Hole 10, Blue Mountain. First of all, can we just talk about yeah. this this view? No, I just wanna throw <laughs> the, my whole bag of dip, yeah. Um, Look at this. It's pretty unbelievable. That was a rip. You want to give it a go? I'll give it a shot. Yeah. No. <laughs> that was terrible. Oh my gosh. You got the first one. First one was good. 